Joe Colombo regarded himself as a good family man, period. And he used to hoot at allegations that he was involved in hijacking, loan sharking, policy and bookmaking, among other various enterprises. The short, stocky, balding, dapper Don was a native of Brooklyn, and his last home there was his private house in the Dyker Beach section, from which the Columbos moved about two years after he was cut down in the prime of life at the age of 54. This is where it happened. Thousands of people were already at the rally. Many more were on their way. Many politicians were up on the stands. Suddenly, there was a series of shots, and Columbo was hit at least three times. A moment later, his assailant was grabbed and pummeled and then shot, killed instantly by Colombo followers. Joe Colombo detested the word mafia, and he once said, I don't know what they're talking about when they talk about the mafia. Prior to him getting shot, which I think was April of 72, he had um, created this Italian uh, civil rights league where Italians all got together, you know, and thought they were unjustly uh, investigated by the feds. And uh, many Italians didn't like the exposure. A lot of the mob guys in and around the inside part of organized crime, they weren't very excited about Colombo's efforts to, to go public. So he, on one side, he might have had some you know, supporters and admiration. On the other side, the guys who were involved in all guys' crime, they thought he was a buffoon. I mean, really. <laughs> it was kind of strange. I mean, I didn't know the guy personally, but uh, I think little by little what came down from the top was that he was an egotistical guy who thought he could um, cover up his his real um, involvement with all, organized crime and the mob by going public and trying to get sympathy from, uh, you know, from other Italians. Uh, I don't think it all worked the way he thought it was going to work. And of course, nobody would have dreamed that he was going to be publicly shot. And uh, I think everything fell apart for him. And of course, the mob wasn't stupid. They needed another figure there. So they had some temporary guys that stepped up to take control of the family. Yeah. They really didn't like him. I mean, in, in actual... Uh, movements of what went on, uh, they looked down upon Colombo. So he he wasn't really very well respected by the other mob families. And at the same time, there was all this secret, you know, rebellion and the Colombo wars and guys were, you know, jockeying for position like Persico. And uh, there was other guys that were trying to take, the, take over the family. So... Um, most of the guys that were lower echelon guys in the street, you know, even Cataldo, who was a hitman for the Columbos, he, he was disgusted with with what Joe Colombo did, you know, going public. It was interesting because that was, you know, 1972, I think. Well, eventually, here we are 15 years later in the 80s, and what does Gotti do? He goes public. So, yes, uh, organized crime suffered f from the exposure, but these guys were egomaniacs. Recently, this uh, Sao Polisi, which means police in Italian, you know already, okay, and I don't think he represents anything well. Uh, I think he took umbrage when I said the same Ball and people that do the things they do, polluting children's minds, or buffoons, and he referred to Joe Colombo as a buffoon. He'll be waiting for you in the afterlife, if you say it to his face. A. B. B. Let's go into this now. What is your claim to fame? You poisoned children with drugs? You formed at a time when informing was unheard of. Okay? Now, I, I, I have a word, and I don't know if they curse, and I, I, I've searched my uh, vernacular and my arsenal of words. And there's only one word I have to describe. You're a blowjob. Now, uh, you got to remember, I knew Joe Brancato well. And you said you went to his house. Anybody knows Joe Brancato, he didn't have anybody come to his house. Now, if you knew him that well, tell me why he didn't have people come to his house. Because you're a blowjob, lying. These people are all dead, nobody can verify it. What crew are you with? I listen to you. It's science fiction. 
Number one. Number two, you'll testify on anybody to save your ass. You had nothing to do with John Gotti. You testified on him that day you were a Gambino guy. Then some way you're a Lucchese guy. A Columbo guy. And second of all, anybody with a nickname crazy gave it to themselves. If they didn't, you couldn't call them that. That's number one. And Sally Ubats, come on, I'll tell you Ubats. Anytime you want to, oh, let's, let's get back to the story and being that I'm sitting at a pool table. Blow job. You entered the home dressed as a UPS guy. Okay. I don't know why. But anyway, you entered the home dressed as you alone, Mr. Ubats. You tell me how you contained the man. But a woman standing there that didn't do anything while you were cutting his testicles off. So I meet this guy who was underneath Theo and he says, listen, you got to go to Florida. I said, what am I going to do in Florida? There's a guy down there, a young guy who's screwing a maid member's wife. I go, really? So what do you want me to do here? He says, you got to take this knife and cut his balls off. Here's the address. Here's where you got to go. And you're going to meet this other guy down there near the airport after you get out. Call this guy up. He's going to give you a UPS uniform and a UPS truck. You'll drive to this guy's house. You'll, you'll knock. The girl will be there. You'll push her in. You'll tie this guy to the pool temple. You'll cut his balls off. That's a bullshit story because it's going to take more than two. And with a knife, you only have one hand free. Unless you're an expert at that, that's why I'm calling you a blowjob. How did you get his pants unbuckled? How'd you take them off? How'd you get him on the pool table? And now, how did you control him? Being the tough guy that you are, you got his balls, his testicles in one hand, the knife in another, and he just said you were Sally Ubats, take my balls. You're a blowjob. Sally Ubats.